Today we're doing a test and review of a house mile 6 liter multifunction pressure cooker. We've already done a, an unboxing, but today we're actually going to get our little fingers dirty playing with some of the buttons, figuring out how this thing actually works. We're going to saute some meat, we're going to throw some vegetables in there, and we're going to basically make my simple beef stew. So if all turns out well, I'll have some tasty food this week, and you guys will learn a little bit more about how this product works. So join me as I do our test and review of a house mile 6 liter multifunction pressure cooker. House Mile provided this pressure cooker of theirs. We've already done an unboxing. If you'd like to watch that, we'll put a link in the description below. And if you'd like to learn more about the product, we'll have a link to the Amazon page as well. Now let's get cooking. So I have two pounds of chuck uh, beef stew. It's all cut up. And what we're gonna do is we've got a little flour mixture here of lightly coat this. And that's all I really wanna do is I just wanna lightly coat this stuff. All right, so now the fun part. We're gonna go ahead and plug this baby in and we'll mention what a few of these little buttons do here. We have program buttons and these are all pressure, the ones I'm about to hit. So we have like the meat stew. So that defaults to like 25 minutes it wants to pressure cook. Um, oops, and of course now it wants to start, which I'm gonna hit cancel on that. You have five seconds to adjust the time and or pressure uh, on any of the stuff when it's flashing and then it starts heating. Um, obviously the slow cook is not a pressure, the porridge is, and it wants to fall to 15. Next one's multigrain, let's cancel that and do multigrain. It looks like it's also 15 minutes. Rice is a low pressure. So in other words, if you have vegetables that are tender or you want to do rice, it'll pressure cook at a low pressure, where the other pressure things are all high. There is a pressure button here that is supposed to be able to adjust between low and high pressure. I've played with it. The manual doesn't really say anything specific other than that's what the function is. So I'm not sure at this point how you <laughs> make it go from low to high. So when you do meat, multigrain, any kind of stuff, it's a high pressure. If you want low pressure, use the rice setting. There are some functions on this that do not use the pressure cooker. For example, the yogurt does not pressure cook and it defaults at eight minutes. Um, you can also cancel all that. Steam, we have that. You also have the slow cook, which defaults to six hours. And on any of this stuff, if you want to bump up the minutes or less minutes, you can also do that. So that stuff is all programmed for you. But you also have a taste button, which cancel out that. It's supposed to also allow you to change things just by hitting the taste button and it's going to allow you. But reading the book and using it are usually two different things. I haven't used it yet. Um, but the easiest is to bump up and down the minutes. So in this case, we're going to play with the saute because I have some meat here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that and it wants to default to like, I don't know, five minutes. Let's go ahead and we're gonna bump that up. That took too long. Let's go ahead and cancel. We're gonna saute. I'm gonna bump that up to like 13 minutes. Can't be too long, right? Cause I'm gonna take it out as soon as the meat is done and I have to do this in batch. It's starting to get warm. So I have about a tablespoon of canola oil. I'm just gonna go ahead and put in there. Ah, it shows it's like 300 degrees in there. We ain't smoked oil yet, so. All right, it just took a couple of minutes for it to warm up. It's around 300 degrees in there, unless my thermometer's lying, so let's go ahead. I got a little sizzling action, right? Looks like we have a little steam in there, boo. Yeah, mmm. All right. First batch is uh, looking kind of tasty there. Stuff on the bottom, which will deglaze nicely. But let's get the next batch. So that's the mm. first in there. So, all right, we got the meat browned, it's out. We got to deglaze this pan. So part of my 
liquid mixture is going to be half wine and half beef broth. So we have some red wine here and this will do a lovely job getting up all those brown bits and stuff. It'll just take a few minutes. So right now I just have this on a saute setting. I just need heat pretty much. All right, lots of good things happened here. The bottom of this thing feels really nice and smooth. That means it's nice and clean and we like it to be clean. That means it's all mixed in there. But a bad thing happened, yes. Some of our wine evaporated. Not that I'm worried about that. That just means we have a little bit less liquid to work with. And I really like the broth in here. So I like to make a double batch. So that's why I'm making four cups of liquid in here. So I'm gonna put in half a cup of wine to make up for what we lost, right? And then I'm also gonna put in a couple of cups of, I use better than bullion, this is beef. So put a couple of cups of that in. So that's like four cups now, yay. But we have all kinds of good stuff we're gonna throw in here. So let's throw in some, oh, I don't know, more flavorings. So we have about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Do I know? I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. We're gonna throw in, I don't know, a teaspoon, two or three of some fresh uh, thyme. I don't know, I didn't exactly measure that. We got a squeeze of some tomato paste. Now this is cool when it's in a, um, like a tube like this, because now you don't have to worry about wasting a whole can unless you're gonna you know, do other stuff with it at the same time. So we'll just put a bunch of that in there. I don't know, works good. And then we can throw this back in the refrigerator and then life is all good and unwasted. We have some bay leaves. And first of all, I'm gonna give props to Amy. See this? See this? See how it says bay leaves? That's Eric proof. So she got these mason jars. She redid the whole pantry. I'm sure she'll do a video on that because before it was good, turned into a mess. She fixed it and I don't know, it looks nice now. Even I can find things. So we're gonna put in three of these puppies. One, two, and three. And we'll fish those out later. We have, I don't know, maybe three cloves of garlic. Throw that in there. Come on, guy. There. Now that's in there. We have some veggies that are going to die and we're going to retrieve them. So we took four stalks of celery, cut them in half, cleaned them of course, cut them in half, throw them in there so it looks like eight little pieces. And I threw in one onion that I just cut in half. Believe me, under pressure, they're going to go. But they're going to make the broth so tasty. So let's go ahead and put in our brown meat. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this lid on and show um, what we're going to do here. So initially here, we're going to go ahead. And what I noticed here, obviously <laughs> here, because I got the camera facing a totally different way, it'll be a little easier for you guys. But just make sure that the label is facing the front. Make sure that this little piece over here, this little guy, make sure he's over here and it'll go on really easy. Right there, it's on. Let's go ahead and turn this puppy on. So we're gonna go with the meat setting here, which is gonna activate the pressure cooker and it's gonna give it like 25 minutes or something, but we don't want 25 minutes. So we're gonna hit that for that. And within five seconds, we can adjust the time. So we're gonna go one, two. So we're down to 23 minutes. So that's good. Then he's gonna start doing what he's gotta do. So right now he's gonna flash. He's gonna start coming up. Also, when it comes time to doing pressure cooking and stuff, you gotta make sure that this vent release is in a closed position so it can build pressure. And then obviously at the end, you can either let it naturally release, which can take 10 or 15 minutes, just by turning the pot off or letting it stay warm. Or if you're cooking stuff that you're worried about overcooking, whether you're doing some seafood type stuff or vegetables and you're afraid it might make a mush, then you can do an immediate release. So here, it says open, close, and open with the close being in the middle. What's kind of weird is it doesn't exactly line up exactly, but it does give you pretty close. So right now, with this thing way out of whack, it feels pretty low. Now it's gonna go up, 
into an open, I believe. It kind of goes up and down. It's almost like a little hill. Like right down, it's, it's, it feels close because it's way down. It goes up, which is probably the open, then slowly goes down. And I think that's really where the close is. And if I go further to the right, it's up, which is going to be the open. So as long as it feels like it's down and it's pointing in the general direction of where it says close, you're good enough. So that's not exact science. And you'll see when it's under pressure and you're releasing steam and stuff. All right, so the cooking time is up. So this thing did a little beepy and it's just maintaining heat. So we're gonna go ahead and release the steam. Um, if I don't do anything, it'll release naturally in 10 or 15 minutes, but I don't wanna wait that long. So with a little protection hand, you can either use tongs or use something like this. You just need to bump it enough to let the steam out. So there we go. There she blows. Well, the biggest thing with cooking under pressure here is using stew meat is a very tough cut of meat and it can easily take one to two hours or even three hours to cook. Or even if you had like a whole roast and you want to cook it under pressure, uh, you can do it in a fraction of the time. So here the meat is, you know, in just a half hour so far, it's like 90% cooked. So right now I'm smelling a lot of stew smell. So what that means is the beef broth, the beef juices, the wine is commingling with onion and garlic and all that good stuff we put in there. And it smells great. Mm. Oops. And now he's releasing a little bit of steam right there. So you're, I don't think you can see that, but I can. So what that means is he's relaxed, which means we can now open this. Ooh. Let's go ahead and get a... Uh... So we got our little initial cooking done, right? So we got some sacrificial stuff that wants to come up because these veggies, they gave up the ghost. They added all their wonderful goodness to the broth. And if you're gonna eat them, they'd probably be flavorless. So with that in mind, I got two cups of baby carrots. Otherwise just take regular carrots and cut them into little slices. I got two onions that I just rough chopped. I really don't care. I like them coarse. That way you got something to bite into. And I've got roughly two pounds of some Yukon Gold uh, potatoes. I don't know. They're all gonna be happy in there because, well, they fit and it's gonna be under pressure. And it's only gonna take maybe six minutes to cook all this stuff. So without further ado, Go ahead and get the, so pop quiz. Anybody know the proper way to put the lid on? Amy. Label to the front. So Amy says, we're gonna go ahead and put the label to the front. And since the front is over here, and this, this little guy here has to face closer to the front than to the back. So he's back there, yay. So, we're going to change this guy from an open to a close. So we're going to hit the meat. Oops, I forgot. Let's do the cancel. So we get zeros. That means he's ready. Let's do the meat again. And we're going to go ahead and take him down to six minutes because this time we don't need much. And then he will do what he needs to. Oop, there he goes. All right, this thing was just beeping, so you know what that means. It's time to take a peek. So let's... Yeah. Ah. Hey! Does that mean we can? Ooh. All 
All right, now that we just took the lid off here, I got about a cup of frozen peas. You don't want to put peas in here until the end because they're so tender, you know, you're going to end up with uh, pea paste, right? You'd be like, where'd the peas go? If you want more peas and put more in there, I put like a cup in there. I don't know. If I was more of a pea lover, I'd put the whole bag in there. All right, we're going to go ahead and serve a little bit of this up here. Like I said, Amy's not really a big old beef eater. She doesn't like big old chunks of meat. So I guess I'll have to eat the bulk of this myself. But she does like the gravy. So she's going to make some rice and steal some of this. She might steal a potato from me because she's been known to do that. Let's dig down to the bottom since that's where the meat is. So, oh yeah, that's, that's a good right there. So. Now, in some little... Uh, pre-tasting, um, we noticed that it just needed a little seasoning to taste. So we're just gonna put a little salt and pepper. I think this will be good enough for it. Um, I wanna say that the cooker performed you know, flawlessly in terms of what it needed to do. Um, I thought the saute feature was okay. Um, I sensed a little bit that it sounded like it came up to temperature and then maybe it dropped down a little bit and then it came back up. So it might have been faster maybe to do it out of there where we can kind of control a, a, a constant temperature. That's just the way it seemed to me, but it wasn't that bad. But like I said, if you want to just do one pot, that's the way to go because it'll do everything you need. The pressure cooking was great. It didn't make a mess at all. Some of these things will hiss and if you're a first time pressure cooker you might get scared it's going to blow up believe me these are not your mama's old you know world war ii stove top things where you got to adjust the temperature on your thing or move the things up here these electronic ones do a really good job they got safety interlocks relief valves all kinds of good stuff to keep from blowing up your house still you don't want to put your head over it just in case right but still i'm joking uh, <laughs> But still, they do a really good job. You set it, you forget it, just keep an eye on it and, you know, release the pressure. Be careful how you do it. You can scald yourself. Just basic common sense. Make sure you're, you know, careful with that part. But they cook. Here's a piece of meat. Oh, yeah, that bad boy just fell apart. So the meat fell apart. You know, and this is chuck. Chuck is, is a muscle meat. It's tough. It needs a good couple of hours minimum simmering at a low simmer or cooking low and slow in the, in the um, oven. This bad boy cooked in a half hour under pressure with no problem. So, he's gone. The um, carrots are little guys. They don't really need that much time to cook. You know, if you're used to raw vegetables, maybe throw them in at the end like the peas. Maybe that'll make you happy. They're not gonna be mushy, but had you cooked them the entire time, they would have been, they would have just been fall apart. So the bigger your pieces, um, maybe it'll have a little more crunch to you. These guys are doing fabulous. They're so hot, but that's where I don't burn my mouth. So I give this guy my thumbs up. The lid is just a little on the clunky side. Like I told you, it goes on pretty much only one way. Slides closed and it's secure. So once again, I want to thank House Smile for providing us with the six liter multifunction pressure cooker. It did a really good job. So thank you for providing it for our test review. Um, if you want more information on it, uh, we'll put a link down in the description below. And um, if you like this video, then please click below, do a like, leave a comment, all that good stuff. And visit our website at amylearnstocook.com. And we're also on Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter at Amy Learns to Cook. Well, act, don't do it, then you action do it.